and welcome to the Lockdown Learning Podcast, a series all about helping parents cope with our new roles in home education during the global COVID-19 pandemic. I'm your host, Kate Coleman, a mother of three boys and a staff member at a democratic school in the UK called East Kent Sudbury School. And I'm your other host, Mark Gallivan, a father and also a staff member at a Sudbury school in Colorado, USA called Alpine Valley School. We have covered a lot of ground on this series so far, everything from what it means to home educate, to best practices, supporting mental health, and everything in between. What we're doing today is looking to the future. That's right. Already, some places around the world are easing lockdown restrictions, and even in places where they're still in place, parents are thinking about the educational choices available to them when their kids return to school. Now, of course, if you've listened to the show before, you probably know that Kate and I have pretty strong feelings about alternative education, specifically the self-directed learning movement. And of course, we already lean towards those options. But there are a lot of other choices out there, and we found some guests to lay them all out for you. On today's episode, we'll hear from Alex O'Neill, who is a parent herself and who spoke to us about her own struggles with educating her daughter and her plans for life after lockdown and Danny Whitehouse, who works with an organisation called Phoenix Education and has spoken extensively about school choices all over the world. We wanted to get two different perspectives in this episode. One from a parent who is actively examining all of the choices available to her family, and one from someone who has seen it all and can help parents make an informed decision about their own children's educational future. Danny and Alex are both very down-to-earth people with great information to share. Here's their interview now. Hi, so I'm Alex O'Neill and um, I live in Essex in the UK. I live in a lovely house with my husband and daughter and cat, Patrick. She won't let me forget him. And I currently work at the university, which is very close to me, the University of Essex. So I am Danny and uh, I live in Norwich in the east of England. I've been involved with exploring educational alternatives for about a decade. Right now, I work at a community and business centre in what is effectively a recycled school. So it was an abandoned secondary school that was transformed uh, for community purposes. So I had a fairly standard education, as you might imagine most people would have. I did pretty well in exams and that sort of thing and you know school was just one of those things that you did really I sort of I sort of enjoy teaching other people how to do stuff I'll go and do teacher training um so without much thought I kind of went into that and I actually the thought of it really excited me and I had lots of ideas about how I was going to teach and and I was teaching this secondary school class and there was actually a particular moment where so this girl came into the class and she I'd seen her in the classes before. She was a very sweet girl, you know, not particularly loud. And she sat down and she just seemed abnormally quiet that day, really still. And obviously I was teaching the whole class, so there was about 30 kids in there. And I, I sort of kept kept checking on her and come, coming up to her and saying, you know, are you okay? And she was very quiet, didn't really say anything. And then about five minutes towards the end of lesson, all the other kids were sort of starting to pack up and, you know, getting a bit sort of doing their own thing. So I went down and sat next to her and said, are you sure you're okay? It's been really quiet today. And she just burst into tears. And um, I don't know what was going on for her, but there was obviously something. And I sat there and I was like, okay, you know, well, you can talk to me. It's, it's absolutely fine. And she sort of, it's, she almost took a breath to sort of open up. And then the bell went and everyone got up. They packed their bags. She got up, packed her bags and went out. And at that moment, I just thought, I that that child right then, she didn't need to move on to another class. She needed to sit and have some time by herself. But that's not how school's set up. You know, the standard educational settings that we currently have are, are not right. And um, I also thought, you know, having a, an, an interest in, in schools and education, like, is that even a thing? Like, I didn't know anyone else who was sort of interested in that sort of thing so I just kind of kept reading and and researching then I got pregnant with my daughter and I obviously 
one of the things you start thinking about is your own, your children's education. And I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. Sort of the next big thing that I found was um, I read about Summerhill School, uh, which is a democratic school in in the UK. They were allowed so much freedom. And I think that at, it was at that point that I realised that education doesn't have to be what we see as school. Whenever I reflect on the the journey that I've had with my educational learning and beliefs and attitudes, I'm unsure how long a story to tell, because I guess our our sort of relationship with learning is from the youngest imaginable memorable age i owe a lot of my current educational philosophy to a kind of discomfort and uh frustration with the school experience i had um in a fairly conventional mainstream setting but i guess the 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 real explosion and redirection of my education journey uh, happened in around 2011. I had a break from my normal job in a school library doing creative writing workshops and things with with young people, and I was really burning with a, a frustration about some of the rigidity and arbitrariness of the system I was finding myself in and was sort of spouting all of these these ideas about uh, a better way of educating and when i was talking about this my uh, friend said oh my my sister works in a school that's quite quite a lot like what you're describing but it's in germany and i was so inspired to know that there was something m- m- closer to my my own vision for education and so within a matter of 24 hours i found myself uh, at this democratic school in Germany, Free School Leipzig. And from the moment I stepped into that playground, I felt a real sense of homecoming, a real sense of relief and euphoria. And I was really inspired to see such an environment uh, set me on a, on, a, on the kind of journey of the past decade in which I've been uh, spending time at more than 20 democratic schools around Europe and uh, working for an organisation, Phoenix Education in England, and really all of my activism and, and interest in, in alternative education. The lockdown has been quite an interesting experience for me. I actually feel really blessed. I think that has allowed me the opportunity to think quite widely about about Phoebe and about being at home with her and about schooling her. My first week very excited because I'd been planning to homeschool anyway and I thought right this is my opportunity you know pulled out all of my homeschooling uh, resources that I knew about and bearing in mind that I was more down the unschooling end of the spectrum I thought um, you know I've got all of this stuff so she can just pick which of these she does you know it's one of those things where you you think you're going to be so prepared for something and then when you actually do it, it's really different experience to how you thought it would be. What we do day to day can be anything and she'll have some days where she just seems to not really do much and she'll have some days where she's really engaged in something and she wants to do experiments and she wants to do cooking and she wants to build Lego and she's just really interested in everything. I think I realised that that's just human nature. It's been so interesting to see how curious she is. So my, I, th- I think all kids are different and this is one of the amazing things about homeschooling actually, but also about having the idea of having loads of different types of school or educational environment that you can send your kids to because some kids will thrive in the structured school environment. Other children aren't. And unfortunately, Phoebe is not one of those kids. She loves moving. She moves a lot. Like she wanders around all day. You know, I want, I personally want to love my life and I want to do things that I love to do. And I want Phoebe to be the same. And I know there's certain things that you have to do in life, of course. But generally, when it comes to learning, I want her to be able to do stuff that she really enjoys. It's not all all roses all the time. But in terms of her learning experience, um, it's it's been great, to be honest.
It's been transformational for lots of families uh, who've found new connections and new ways of being together and uh, new passions and hobbies and interests uh, and uh, and many who are rethinking in along the similar lines to you, Alex, about, about uh, taking their children out of school and, and doing doing things differently. And all of these uh, freedom-related learning approaches are all about providing choice to people. And it's really disconcerting when parents receive a letter and their child is four saying that their child is reaching compulsory schooling age. That language is quite uh, deceptive and unfortunate because, uh, in fact, according to the law, at least here in the UK, uh, at that age, you reach the age of compulsory education um, in which your child must uh, be entering full-time education, uh, but it doesn't have to be at school. So that, that word school is, is a bit uh, confusing and uh, obstructing, I think. There are so many different types of children, so many different types of families, and really there should be many different types of schools on offer. Um, so for many people, uh, uh, home education is much preferable to uh, school education. And as you were saying, Alex, I find that there are such a diversity of reasons why people home educate. Some homes that are doing home education are a lot like school and, and follow a very traditional curriculum and, and routines of a school day might even have a bell. Others have much more freedom and lots of time in the woods and climbing and uh, running through streams. So, so there's lots of home education ways out there. And in addition to that, what's really exciting for me is seeing how parents collaborate together in various ways. So uh, I think it's very natural for a village to raise a child. And I'm, I'm really attracted by uh, sort of cooperative parenting models and, and perhaps more formalized schools that are not schools, alternatives to schools. So the really free schools, um, at least in England, are the uh, handful of, of democratic and self-directed learning communities around the country uh, that operate in all kinds of different ways. So um, at my last count, uh, there were 27 alternative learning communities in the country and with a diversity of different ways of setting up. So some of them are simply uh, cooperatives of parents. So 10 parents have got together and decided that we'll take turns to take care of our, our children together. Most of them operate for less than 18 hours per week so that they can sidestep the, the, the need to be categorized as a school and to be accountable for the kind of arbitrary and, and rigid uh, assessment framework of offset. So we're seeing some really exciting and, and diverse approaches to education around the country and uh you know worldwide there there's a huge movement of democratic schools you're obviously very well connected with the movement of Sudbury schools um uh, most prolific in in the united states but but all, all over the world and uh so there, there there are some really exciting ways of doing education and i think that is really so needed when we have so many different people on the planet we need many different types of schools as uh, certainly for me i i would absolutely love to get over my slight mental hurdle of how we would cope financially if I um, you know quit my job um, which is still there unfortunately but I'm hoping that I can get over that and keep her off school because I've, I've and I've been constantly going back to Phoebe actually and asking her you know what would you like to do do you want do you do you miss school do you want to go back and consistently she said no, I, I love homeschooling. I get to do, I get to do what I want, and and that's and that's great. And I th and, but I can still see that she has that curiosity and that interest. So, yeah, all I would say is, if you have those doubts, just know that they probably don't need as much teaching, um, for want of a better word, as you think they do, and. As long as you're just interested and curious in them and what they are interested and curious in, then you'll do absolutely fine. I really hope that the future of education will be different after lockdown. I really hope that, you know, I hope that schools take heed of the experiences of young people during this pandemic and want to reform schools to, to much more responsive to, to what um, students need and want and what uh, an incredibly uncertain future might hold. 
And one day, I don't have any children of my own at the moment, but one day I will, I hope. And uh, I don't want to put them into into uh, traditional schooling environments. Um, uh, I'd be too afraid of, of the damage that, that might happen for them and the trauma they might experience. Um, uh, of having their learning and interests stunted, um, so I'm I'm determined that I'll I'll not do that, and I'll find an alternative either by uh, forming some kind of parenting cooperative or starting my own democratic learning community. Um, I've no idea how soon that will be, um, but uh, I'm 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 committed to to not not sending any of my future children to um, to to mainstream schools. That's for sure. That does it for this episode of the Lockdown Learning Podcast. We would love to hear your feedback as well as any other suggestions you have for future episodes. You can contact the show via email at lockdownlearningpodcast at gmail.com. This week's episode has a wealth of information in the show notes, and I really encourage you to check them out. There are links to blog posts written by both Danny and Alex, as well as a whole host of different educational philosophies and resources. We try to include everything that parents might need, and we really hope that they're helpful to you. In our next episode, we'll be talking specifically about self-directed democratic education, the kind that happens in Sudbury schools and similar institutions. You may have heard Danny mention those in the interview, but we are going to take a really deep dive into these institutions, which are very near and dear to both of our hearts. Look for that episode coming next week. If you'd like to learn more about our schools, you can find East Kent Sudbury School online at eks.org.uk and Alpine Valley School online at alpinevalleyschool.com. Thanks for listening today. I'm Mark. And I'm Kate. And this is the Lockdown Learning Podcast. Until next time, remember to take a deep breath, hug your kids and pat yourself on the back because we know you absolutely deserve it. Be well.